this one. So again, thank you everyone. Uh, this session is from now on being recorded, so it's going to be available on AMI uh, YouTube channel. Uh, as usual, uh, you know what's happening. If you don't want to appear, just put yourself uh, off camera. You can change your name. Today's session is mostly going to be a draw along session. There are going to be three uh, three parts to it. In the first one, I'm going to walk you through my visual journey, not because I want to brag about my accomplishments, but mostly because a lot of people feel concerned that they don't know how to draw, it takes a lot of time. And this is my attempt to show you how, well, that's not exactly true, everyone can draw, and regardless of where you start from, and it takes not so much effort if you know where to go. So I'm gonna give you my personal tips on uh, what I have followed. Uh, we'll then do a draw along session where I'll walk you through how you can use basic elements to prepare to create a visual that looks nice and then we'll try to give it a go uh, and at that point on if you feel comfortable you can come uh, on video or not uh, but we would like to see your work at that point as we mentioned in instruction you'll, re -ID, you'll need ideally three different colors uh, it doesn't matter so much uh, the size of the markers if you can get for the dark one which is the the one that you'll use the most you can get a thicker tip uh, the result is going to be uh, more nice to look at but you can use a bureau pen and it's going to be the same principles will apply cool without further ado let's start with my journey in the world of visualization can you see my screen fantastic yes so for me things started about four years ago a little bit less uh, i started a meetup another meetup not this one one that i ran in person in dublin uh, and this guy here at the center pavel introduced me to the magical world of seriously playful scrum mastery and the first meetup that we co ran i provided the space and the organization bit and he provided the, the contents and the creativity was around how to introduce visualization in in the world of the professional scrum master and the first thing he did was for example to create a visual agenda for me you may believe it or not this was the very first time coming across something like this and it blew my mind uh i put here a couple of dates for you to get a reference and this is month minus 11 so 11 months almost one year before i started uh training properly loved it uh, we ran a few more meetups and on the fifth one we created a one day training and we gave away some certificates. This is the level of my drawing at that time. I copied this thing down here on the internet. I stole from my partner <laughs> the idea of, uh, of the layout. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's very, very basic. This was the, the maximum I could do at that time. Uh, a few months after I managed, uh, I started using visualization to run an in-office retro. Now, some of these from a distance, they don't look too bad, maybe. But if you start looking here, all the circles are wobbly. The lines are all, yeah, it's not good. And this was my very best example. Going to something a little bit more realistic. In here, this is my representation of Mudas. And we'll go, uh, we'll see how this evolved. And this was my attempt to explain a process using uh, using visuals. And this was me five months, seven months later, actually, without any training at all. This, and this is quite appropriate as we have Jeff. I, I, I used uh, the, the side protocol, the, the side cards to run a team charter. This was my flip chart. I copied them from Jeff. And again, you can see how the, the, the lettering is all over the place, things go up and down. The drawings here are the use of spaces. Yeah, okay, I can get what it is, but it's not ideal. Uh, Jeff did a much better job <laughs> in the session that he ran at the time where I learned this stuff. And then after almost a year of me attempting things, I finally managed to attend a Bicablo basic training. And in the space of two days, things turned completely upside down for me. So this was material that I created during the training. I took it online, it was at the beginning of the pandemic. You can see from the date here. It was supposed to attend in person, but the pandemic didn't allow for that. 
And so you can see here how we, we, we practice on drawing lines and, and shapes. And you can already see how the circles look like circles. And from here, you can't see any more lines overlapping. And with few simple ideas, the quality of my work already changed. It was not me becoming much better. It was having those basic skills. Uh, day three, so two days later, I started practicing icons, which is what we're going to do later on. Uh, there's a set of icons that you can use, you can copy from. That's your visual vocabulary uh, that you can use to produce uh, flip charts and visuals that make sense. Now, these taken in isolation don't give you much, um, but we'll see how we can combine them a little bit more later. This was my first attempt of sketch note. This was a session, I, I, a lesson I attended of one hour uh, that I attended with Paul Godard. Uh, so always around agility. Again, you can probably read it. The, the reading is not very readable. It's a little bit all over the place. We'll see how my graphic recording has improved taking a lesson. Day six, I was absolutely in love with this stuff. I started uh, practicing logos for a conference that we organized within my company. And in here, I just started composing the basic icons from Bicablo, from the set that I was given as a, as a gift. You can see how just combining, I start building something that is, I'll, hopefully, you will agree, a little bit more interesting than what I've done so far. One month later, I attend a conf, um, I actually co-run one of the sessions in the conference, and this was my first live graphic recording of half an hour conversation that we did there uh, with 30 people doing a Q&A. Forty, fifty days later, uh, I took a second training, more advanced. This time, two days on uh, visual storytelling, and hopefully, you can already see how my drawing start to tell a story now. Now, the one in the center was uh, one of the five, six flip charts that I created to tell to tell the never-ending story with movable parts, which is something I love a lot. Um, but already, I can combine things. Forty-five days later. Um, I then started using things in a different creative way to present, create advertisement for the events that I was running, meetups, internal offsite for my company, all that kind of stuff. Uh, here a comparison of my sketch noting skills improved six months later. Took the graphic recording bit and that helped me gaining even more confidence. Started creating more advanced visual. Again, here, if you decompose this visual here is actually only 11 basic icons combined together with only a couple of lines invented by me, like this palm here, which is the only bit that you follow me to say looks very bad. That's why I didn't, that's because I didn't follow uh, the vocabulary that I had. I tried to, you know, freestyle a little bit. This is my representation of Muda one year later. Now, most of the, the images here are copied from Kanban eyes, but hopefully you can see the difference in style between left and right. All good, you may say this is all analog. What about the digital world? Well, this is my first mural board to play a game about invest acronym for user, uh, user stories. This is the very same activity ported in a new style of the mirror board uh, that I ran for a, an internal community of my previous company that we call CAT. Without going into the details, hopefully already from a glance, you can get a sense of what's the flow here. Definitely was much more appealing than the one on the left. A couple of years later, my sketch notes started becoming more unstructured and then I started experimenting more. I also started prepare, uh, practicing portraits with other trainings that I added. Finally, this is what I do now. I try to combine uh, lettering from, this is Word, not even Google Word uh, or Google Slides and combine things with handwriting and pictures and whatever else. This is a simulation of chalk, for example. If you're interested in, in my visual work, this is my handle on Instagram. I try to post there. There's now everything, but it's gonna be everything that I will be doing in the future. Now, let me breathe because we are done with that bit of the presentation. So part one, you've survived. 
Any question on this before we move on? A, a quick question. Um, you, you mentioned about training and, yes. and some of the training that you did along the way. Is, is there anything you, you would share with us about um, anything you might recommend as far as training or maybe come back to that later? I can already tell you two things. One, uh, if you want to train today, uh, Bicablo has an awesome community of trainers and, and people. Uh, both aspects are important to me. And you can go on any website. Uh, from your accent, I may infer that maybe you're based in English native country, maybe UK. <laughs> yes. So Work Visible uh, is your point of reference. Or go there, that's where I train amazing people or if you're interested give me a call because i'm preparing something myself does that answer your question thank you it does right awesome. and also the there's a link in the chat um that jeff posted um that you can download the bicablo uh set of um a bundles of images um with a discount um, using a code and he's provided those in the chat. So just have a look and you can download those digital versions of some of the Bicablo bundles of images. I'm gonna say something, thank you, Deidre. I'm gonna say something that possibly Jeff is too humble to share. I discovered about a month ago that the person who, so to say, well, without the so to say, who introduced Bicablo to any country that was not Germany was actually Jeff. Uh, I discovered that many, 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 as many other things that he has introduced, I'm discovering these things. But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> uh, part number two, this is where we start to draw a lot. Let me switch camera and let's see if this works. Yeah, I see something, okay. Uh, up to you if you want to bring me in full screen or not, uh, but you probably want to see what I'm doing and, and draw along. We'll break down any composition in three uh, very basic parts. Containers. Let me write that down for you. Containers. frames, which is if you want a special type of container and text. And within the text, you have a special type of text, which is the title. Almost any visual poster and layout that you can think of will have these three components. So what we'll do now is to go through each of these and explore what they can look like. So let's start first with containers. You may need a few pieces of paper or if you're on, on an iPad, uh, a, few, a few frames to contain everything. And keep them close to you as we'll use them because we'll use them at the end. Okay, so containers Frank, first, I said. Frankie, yes. sorry to interrupt. I'm just wondering for the purposes of the recording, do we spotlight, do you spotlight your iPad so that it may be best. better viewable on the video or as you're recording? Yeah, let's do that. Does that work? It's blurry for some reason. Let me click the button here. Yeah. Yes. There we go. It's been more in focus now. Does that work for you? It's good for me, yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for, for the idea. <laughs> so no containers. Worries. What are containers? Are container of information. We use them to organize how the information is structured and to guide the eye of the viewer across the page. What do they look like? Well, first of all, they are typically very simple in shade because you don't want to distract anyone uh, from the actual information. 
and the simplest version of it are circles squares triangles and for some reason the camera is playing funny and if you want ovals Oop, this is not right now if you look at this this looks very very similar to other containers that we may be more used to like this which is a speech bubble and this specific speech bubble we usually use to say something we then may have the need to show that we are thinking of something or maybe to shout something Or finally, maybe say hi, this bird. Now, these are the most common. Uh, containers but if you if you look around you it's not impossible that you may have a piece of paper hanging on the wall that you've put some cello tape on to stick on the wall Or you may have a metal plate, for example. Or a pin, or something that you've pinned on a cork board. Now, these are containers that are all uh, spread across the space. But if you look at the shout one, I didn't have enough space. I did something here. I started overlapping them. Sorry, before I remove. Overlap. Are you there, Frankie? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Awesome. I think you froze there for a few seconds. Okay. Any better now? Yes, it's good for me. Okay. Jamie, is the camera back for you? You've posted something in the chat. Yeah, all good. Awesome. So if you want to overlap things, say that you have a circle in the center. You start from the thing that should be more visible, the thing that should be on top. Uh, if you were to imagine something that is closer to you, imagine of this, uh, the, this space as depth. You start with the thing on top. It's gonna to be your circle. This is the point where you put your important information. Okay. Well, let's say that 
then do something less relevant. You can create other containers like this. Making sure that here, they don't touch each other. That's pretty important for something that we'll do in a moment. And the containers don't have to be all of the same size. They don't need to be regular. Uh, I could draw, for example, under circle. Or a triangle. And as I do this, I'm creating multiple layers. Now, I wouldn't recommend to go this complicated in anything that you're drawing, unless you're absolutely sure what you're doing. But this is mostly to show you a technique. Now, how can we bring this to life a little bit more, reinforce even more the three dimensionality? Imagine that you have a lamp here. And this lamp is projecting some light, of course. And these objects are 3D objects, so they're casting a shadow. If the light is going in this direction, all our shadows will be in the bottom right part of the element. So let's start casting the shadow. And this is where all of a sudden, this gap that you've left becomes useful. I see, that's very clever, Frankie. Now you draw the shadow in the gaps. Yes. It also gives it a, a, a 3D effect. Is that what you're after? Yes, and, and you may like it or not, but it tends to help making things pop, literally pop comes out of the page. Because mm -hmm. if now I draw anything else here, another square, just to draw a square, oops. Now, because the, the, the line is so thick, you may still see it, but it will, shouldn't have the same effect as the rest. Yes, you can see that that doesn't that square doesn't pop out as much as those containing the shadows. Yeah, let's put one side by side just to make a comparison as accurate as possible. Amazing. Thank you. Not a method I developed. <laughs> you need to thank the Bicablo guys. Now, I'm gonna remove this screen in a moment. Again, take a picture if you need. Um, okay. So we mentioned containers, we mentioned overlap. Uh, we mentioned, if you remember, that there are special type of containers called frames. Now, what are frames? Special types of containers. And what do they contain? The full page. Uh, the idea is that having a blank page like this is not the same as having one that is enclosed by a frame. Let me show you what I, what I mean. So if we take, for example, this page here, the first one, this is how it looks bare bone. And if I had just a rectangle around it, should already look a little bit more professional. Hmm. It does. It makes it gives it that bit of more of a pizzazz. Um, Bizarre. It's exactly the special effect I was looking for. <laughs> and again, if you want, you can add a little bit of, depending on where you want to put the accent, 
I can add a little bit of that. And it's the same body page with four words written on it, but all of a sudden mm -hmm. starts to have more, uh, become more interesting. Yeah, fabulous. Just for anyone listening, I didn't pay DJ to help me with this in this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it's all so cool. Cool. So let's see what kind of frames uh, we can draw. We, we see in the rectangle. Let me draw it again, just because we want to build a mini uh, how do you say? catalog. Oops, it was a little bit. I so want to join in, Frankie, but because I'm facilitating, helping out with technology, I can't. So I'm sitting here holding my hands together, but I wish I was drawing along with everyone. <laughs> so I have to add, uh, uh, you know, just use my vocabulary to express um, how how uh, cool and exciting this new skill is that I'm I'm learning myself. Well, thank you. Hopefully you, you left the recording if you want to watch it again, or I can have a yeah. special session only for you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Okay, let's go back to the frame. So we have the rectangle that we've just seen. Uh, we then may have this, if you want. And here I'm gonna change pen because otherwise it's not gonna be easy to do it on this size of page. This could be a different type of frame. But I'm showing that this is one of the many pages that I have. Another very, very simple type of frame that you can do. And I'm going for the most simple thing, simplest things that I could think of. Because the idea is that everyone should be able to do it in about five minutes. Fine. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody can draw a square or a rectangle or a square on top of another square on top of another square. So these are very easy to pick up. Thank you. And again, I didn't pay you to say that. So thank you for confirming. Let's do this type of frame now, which is I'm just using two pens of two sizes, if you want. And in this case, I have the technology to do so. But of course, you can start with the, if you don't have two sizes, you can start with the small one and, and let's say draw two lines, one close to each other to make it thicker. It's going to make the same effect. So in this case, I'm just drawing two rectangles, one inside the other one, and I have the frame of a picture. Uh, and if you want, A couple of things that are a little bit more refined without going crazy. Um, let's do this. So, so far it's almost the same as before. I'm just not changing uh, the thickness of my marker. And once you get to the corner here, you could, you add an embellishment. The simplest thing that you can do is something like this. Or you could go as crazy as you want. Uh, two last ones. This is very useful, I find. You want to give some importance. So in here, I start with two sides of a rectangle, and the angle though is, is a uh, what do you say? It's rounded. Then what I typically do is create a sort of well, without the sort of a spiral, to go down. And then here, curve, two horizontal lines. Frank, if I can ask something. Yes, of course. So that scroll there you've drawn in a specific order. You've drawn it. You've drawn certain elements first and other elements last. Is that important? Not really. 
not really i don't think so it really depends how how it's i don't like prescript prescriptive ways of drawing uh everyone finds their natural way to go about something so you probably want to keep in mind that typically if you are right-handed you want to draw the things on the left first purely because mm. otherwise it would smudge uh, easily mm. on big surfaces what you're drawing but aside from that and there are certain directions that are typically easier for your hand so mm. for example going from up to down it's typically much much easier than going from down to up oh wow interesting never realized that before so you can see these two lines. This is not intentional. I'll try to do my best. One is fairly straight and the other one is curved. You can try it out. You see it much better with lettering when you want to be super precise. And so you tend to draw all the lines ideally from top to bottom. Mm. Wow, and interesting. And uh, we've just got a quick question there. Um, mm -hmm. Well, it might not be quick, I don't know, but an interesting question from Nisha in the chat. She's asked, are there specific usage or best scenarios for each type of frame? I'm gonna answer adding one frame first and then and then answer to that if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, this is my favorite frame. It may look complicated, look complicated, but it actually takes almost the same amount of time and this as the square one. And it goes like this. So the idea is to create a square, sorry, a rectangle, uh, where occasionally you make a mistake, like this. Okay, we do the same here. And then here. When you get almost to the end on the further uh, line here, you do a small triangle. And then you continue making mistakes. <laughs> and this is possibly my favorite. I never use it because, because maybe the uh, it has a couple of attributes, if you want. Uh, mm -hmm. It gives me the idea that it's something playful or ancient mm -hmm. or something I want to keep an eye on. It has a lot of dynamism, if you want, a lot of uh, details. And so it takes away from the content. So you want to be careful when I do it. And all these bits here, they basically take, out, take away space. I can't write until here. I probably, I cannot write. Yes, it's almost a frame for one or two words, three yes. words at most. Precisely. This one here is the most versatile. It's fast to do. Uh, it's the minimum that doesn't take away almost any attention from the eye. And something that you can do, like I've done here, you don't overlap it with your text. And so basically use it as a complement in the page. So you, you don't need to worry up front to size things so that it fits nicely. Well, with something more that has more of a, in here, you don't know what I'm drawing. This is a rectangle. There's no, you don't add any further meaning this is not an object, it's a rectangle, it's a geometric shape. This is an object. And so when I draw it, and if there is some overlap, I want to be more careful because anything they do that, for example, if I were to draw something that goes like this, which is the equivalent mm -hmm. of what I'm doing here, this will look very weird. Mm -hmm. And so as a reader, your reaction would be, oh, that, that, that doesn't work. So geometric shapes, while well, you start, and if you cannot control your space properly, go fancier. This is my rule of thumb. Go fancier if you are if you have control of the how the space is used, and whatever message the thing you are drawing has maps the content. If you remember from my presentation, I draw a map, a fantasy map of Dungeons and Dragons with vampires, and this was the right frame, in my opinion, for that. Okay, any other question? I can't keep too much control of uh, of the chat. No, no other questions have come in just yet, um, but I think you answered, hopefully Nisha, Frank, you answered your question. So that's 
quite good because there's one last thing that I would like to tell you uh, before we move to the third and final part where we actually start bringing everything together to create uh, your first or for some of you, for some it's not the first mini poster. Um, one last thing is a note about text. When you write text, unless it's a title, You want to write it like this. So in short lines, sorry, in, in over multiple short lines, as opposed to something like this. Why so? Because this is a component, becomes a component the moment I wrap it in a container. And I can, for example, maybe write some more text and wrap it in another container and maybe some more text. In this case, I write it in with this container and I can start linking things, for example. And I can move it around and maybe as I build things, you, you don't plan everything up front. It happens in a fluid way. For example, I see that here I have some space and I add maybe two small notes, just a couple of words each. And it gives me a lot of way to play with the space as I discover things. A piece of text like this, which is roughly the same length as these three combined, maybe a little bit more actually, something like this. If I were to enclose it in a container, it would take me something like this. And the moment I add three, Pieces of text like this have almost blocked my entire page. So keep it small and playful. This also helps you keeping things concise. Three words maybe uh, per line. It's probably the max that you want to have. And then it depends, of course, on the situation. But with this in mind, now all of a sudden we have a text here. Now draw our frame. And as you can see, I'm not overlapping things here. What has more relevance is the content more than the frame. And so this is on top. And if you want, you can decorate it a little bit. Just because. Oops. And without writing anything, you have a very simple layout to write something. That already starts to tell a story. You can imagine a narrative. Yes, thank you. And I love that you introduced that um, because that gives me an idea. So what do we need maybe to complement? There's some space here. We don't have anything else to write. How can we complete this story in the best way? Well, maybe maybe we can draw an icon and the icon could be anything. Maybe it's a brilliant story. And so what we'll draw is our light bulb. If you remember from the last time, it's the equivalent of writing Uzmo. And here you have a piece of content that looks much different from what you would have. This could be a slide. Now, of course, you don't know all the icons now, but we'll help you with that. So let me swap to another canon. As part three starts, and you're all invited to take a challenge. So we'll go through, I'll show you a list of icons that you're invited to copy. 
uh, the challenge for you is over the next six, seven minutes to come up with one quote that you would like to represent visually, adding one or more of the icons that I'm going to show you in a moment, as soon as I find them, as soon as my iPad connects, really. Then I need to reshare because I forgot. No, it was already clicked. Okay. Let me click the button. So grab an icon from the ones that will appear in a few moments. You remember your containers, how they are done. Uh, you have learned a couple of ways to frame things. Have fun and in six, seven minutes, create a poster using all the things uh, that we shared with you, something that resonates with you. The instructions are intentionally vague enough to, le to let you unleash your creativity in the way that you prefer. If you are a beginner, you can do something like what I'm sharing in my camera. So something very, very simple, just a title and a quote and one image. If you are more advanced, you can unleash creativity and skills. I'm going to put on some music for about six ish minutes. And then any of you who feels comfortable to share uh, your work, that would be amazing to see. Have fun. <laughs>
So just in case for, for anyone who's wondering, I'm using an iPad Pro 12.9 inches. I'm using an application called Procreate. Um, it's very cheap. It's like a tenner. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. I know maybe 5% of it, uh, but it's already very powerful. Colors here. This is the color scheme of Agile Master Institute. So I'm trying to use the same colors that we've seen at the beginning. Um, but you can use any palette. You can see here I created different ones in the past. What else? What I'm doing here, this is a little bit more advanced. You can see there's one layer with the drawings. I'm going to dis disable it for one instant. Mm. And there's one layer that because it comes later, so it's low in a lower position, it's somehow behind the one that comes above. And in the second one, I have the colors. Right, that's how you've got the color shadow combo, which um, yes. Claire mentioned that she likes through so much. So because of the layering that you can do in Procreate, you can get Precise. that effect. So I started with the flame here coloring in the normal way you can see it's not precise and I said okay let's complicate things a little bit and add the layering in Brilliant. okay let's give people maybe 30 more seconds to finish their masterwork and then let's see if anyone feels comfortable in sharing with us your masterpieces Okay, people. Oops. Time's up. And let me put back the other webcam. How was that? Did anyone manage to put something together? Maybe. <laughs> Actually, <Benjamin>. yes. <laughs> Sophie. Yes. Daniela. Yes. Okay. I, I'm actually surprised that I did, but I did. <laughs> Awesome. I see Anu ready to show something. Let me spotlight yes. her. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. Oh. oh wow. Lovely poster. And yes, you can do it. Definitely. <laughs> you have proof there. Tangible paper proof. Thank you. Thank you. Round of applause Thank for you. you. Yes. Ah, uh, Daniela, we can spotlight Daniela. Um let's see. Um, uh, Tutu, uh, Milosh as a poster. Awesome stuff. Are you, so, you going to spotlight or should I? Sure. There's Daniela. Thank you. Hope. Yep. Love that. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, Wonderful. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, Tutu had sunshine. Let's see. Oh, send no. some here in Ireland, please. We haven't seen sunshine yet. <laughs> uh, we've got, oh, nice one. Amy, you've got a comment. Let's see. Can we find Amy in the, um, Amy, where are you? Spotlight yourself. You want yeah. to slide? I found her. I found her. Let me get her. <laughs> there we go. Heat wave. <laughs> 90 ah. degrees. Where is it? 90 oh. degrees. Where are you? Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Oh, see, oh, my goodness, you're wow. dialing all the way from Seattle. We're very impressed. Thank you for sharing some of your sun. Uh, Rich said he has some. 
get something ready. What is rich? Too many people. You, you're too productive people. Mm. Oh. <laughs> mm, nice. Brilliant. On, you, an, oh, on an iPad, looking nice. ahead. Awesome work. Love that. What I know software do you use, Rich? Sorry. No, go for it, Frankie. Uh, yeah, I, it's concepts. Another great app. Thank you for sharing that. So also showing that, yeah, we're not limited by tools as long as you have a pen. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and one, Benjamin, is it time for one more? I know you were, yes, also you were using digital there or also an app. I can draw, of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well, well done. Okay, so we, we are at time. Uh, what do we have next? I think we have another another meetup coming in on the 6th of June. Yes, yes, we do. We have a meetup on the 6th of June. Um, uh, I can posting the link in the chat right now. Um, sign up for that right now so that you don't go onto the waiting list. Um, uh, and what do we have after that as well? So let's see if I can um, take the share um, and wait, hang on, I'm on the YouTube channel. Can you can you see that I pasted that link in already? If you want to um, uh, go back into the chat to find the YouTube channel, this is where this session will be posted to and you can rewatch the video. Um, uh, and uh, just want to remind you of the session on the 6th of June, as Francesco mentioned, the third in the series, a story of images. Um, sign up for that right now. Um, and then anything else you want to mention, Frankie? Can I go on and sure. add do some yeah. marketing for you. Just do some marketing for you, right? So, Frankie Thank you. also um, uh, starting his um, Scrum Mastery Pathway cohort um, uh, for Agile Mastery Institute, and he will be starting that on the fourth of September. If anyone is interested, um, the link to that would also go in the chat, um, as well as a discount code. So, for this exclusive meetup, ten percent. Um, exclusive discount um, and I'll post in the discount code if you're interested in signing up for the Scrum Mastery Pathway that uh, Frankie will be the instructor for um, starting the 4th of September. Thank you my friend and I know you also have something going on soon isn't it? Yes so as a as a fellow instructor and guide at, at Agile Mastery Institute I also have an online cohort for the Scrum Mastery Pathway. My cohort is starting on the 25th of May. If somebody does want to um, find out more about it um, please reach out to me on LinkedIn or go on the Agile Mastery Institute website and look at what other course might be suitable for you. Perhaps my dates don't suit you, neither do Frankie's. And there's another guide who is launching an online or an in-person course near you. Um, and you can, um, yeah, increase your Scrum Mastery skills if that's what you feel you need. But yeah. So 25th of May. So if you're impatient, it's starting anytime soon. If you are patient, you can wait September or there's plenty of other option in between. I see Storm there before her her arm falls. Let me spot. I got there. very, I got a little ambitious. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, but for anybody well, who gets uh, it, but for anybody who gets it, they'll get a good laugh, I think, hopefully. I will not laugh, but I'm smiling. Hopefully you can see that. No, no, <laughs> you should laugh. It's a joke, but that's okay. If you don't get it, you if you don't get it, you won't get it. Yeah, the answer to the to everything in the universe. The meaning of yeah, what's the question? What's the meaning? No yeah, what's the meaning of life, the universe, and everything. It's forty-two. Two. Of course it is. Wonderful. Of course well, it is. Of course. Well done. According, according to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Never yes. mind. Yes, it is. Well done. <laughs> well, well, well done. No, that um, is that is very nicely hitchhiked, says Jeff in the chat. <laughs> nicely hitchhiked. Thank you so much. It was fun. Thank you. Thank you also for managing to unblur 
uh, your video on time. There's one question from Claire. Um, so at the moment, the only visual training I can recommend is from the guys in Bicablo. So work feasibly if you're in the UK. There are other people I'm happy to recommend to all. Most of them are friends. Some of them I only know by reputation. I'm putting together something, but I don't have a date. If there's enough interest, I'm happy to, uh, to accelerate that. More easily, should you join, and this is a shameful plug, should you join my Scrum Mastery Pathway? There are five navigator sessions that are of three hours each, or we may do uh, two of uh, 90 minutes, we'll see. And during those, we can explore anything that the cohorts want to explore. So my cohort is very likely that we'll do uh, some more deep dive into the drone. Yes. I can't promise my cohort will do any drawing, but I, I think I must make space for it because it is a very um, a very good way to visually represent concepts that can make learning sticky, which is what Scrum Mastery Pathway is all about. May I ask a final, like a final, just, do I need to ask in the chat or may I just ask it? No, go in ahead. In -person. Sorry, I know, right. Oh. Uh, any in-person, I mean, I know this is this can be done virtually, but oh my gosh, it's so much better. I, I think particularly in this type of sense to see and interact in person, any kind of in-person sessions coming up, that, that that would be my preference. It's kind of mastery pathway sessions. If you no, the drawing it. sessions is what I would be, yeah, looking for. Lots, of, yeah. Uh, I think the answer is the same as I gave you before. For what concern the UK? I think they're running something in October together with another person called Charlotte de Mer. Gotcha. Those are the work visual. Yes, yes. Go to the website, see if they've got. Where are you based, Storm? I'm actually in Tampa, Florida, but I don't mind traveling. So <laughs> then ah. there are two Jill uh, working uh, covering the US area. Okay. Um, Jill Greenbaum and Jean, I don't remember now. I'll, I'll find it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, people, I think I think we have uh, exceeded a little bit our time box, but hopefully uh, this was still fun. Should we let you go home to enjoy the rest of your day, dinner, whatever else? Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on a sec. I've just found so Jill Greenbaum. I've just Googled it. Thanks to Google, um, which still works very well. Uh, they haven't converted to chat GPT just yet. Um, Storm, there is a link in the chat. Um, she's based in America. You can check that out and maybe um, she'll come to an in-person um, course near you. Thank you. Got it. Uh, thank you. It was wonderful. I appreciate it. Uh... Deirdre, your, your facilitation and, and Frankie, your, your sharing. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank day. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all for joining. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks, Frankie. Ciao. Bye. 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 I'm going to stop the recording too.